brought new week, so I didn't finish off the front brake adapters last week. I'm gonna do some welding tonight to warm ourselves up. But yeah, we just still got them all bolted together. Just gonna tack them all together so I can uh, weld them. We'll use our tapered nuts that we did last week to line it all up so it's nice, and then we'll just tick it together. So that seemed to have worked out really well. Lined up pretty good. Right, so finished welding them now. Um, as you can see, they're not too bad. Uh, some of them, because I'd learnished a bit more than others, so I don't have the, the burn mark from burning the scale off, but they haven't come up too bad. There's not too much rock in them, so I won't have to skim too much off them. It's still hot. So one of the jobs I didn't finish last week was this last cast rod, so I had 16 of them sand plating. Um, these and the Commodore front brake adapters will give me enough weight to get 40 kilos and that means I can go do my plating so I'm just going to bang this out tonight. As you can see, 200 amps is pretty hot. Right, so tonight I'm going to start this S14 lock kit. So I've got a S14 SR20 engine crust member that I'm going to move the rack forward on. And then some S14 LCAs that I'm going to uh, put 25mm extension in and then guts it. Um, these are R31 LCAs that I've got to do. They use the same gussets as an S chassis because of the link pin and then I'm going to go plus 35 on those and then I've got a set of R33 LCAs that I'm going to gusset and I've just got to cut some more extensions for. So I'll start them off, first thing you'll do is cut the lock stop off. So I'll just cut through all the lock stops off. I get too concerned with the nicks and all that, we'll grind it all back. And then because we're gonna cut it and weld it, we'll weld it all back up at the same time. So, so I switched over to a grinding disc now, just clean them all up, and then we can uh, mark them out. Now that we've got them all ground up and cleaned up, we're going to start marking them out for cutting. So, I like to cut them at around 70mm from the centre of the ball joint to cut.
and you can see the repairs we've got to do when we um, start welding it all together so we'll just fix all that as we go we'll do all three pairs at once switched over to the cutting disc again so now we're just going to cut them up so we can start fabbing them together Now we just gotta peel some of the paint off, give it a bit of a prep, and then we can um, get our extension piece and weld it in. Right, so I've ground a little prep into the side of the, the extension, just cleaned the back up, and I just made sure that we've got all the coating off. Make sure you've got the B and the B. Just tack it together. Um, the shape of the thing's not exactly right, but it's still heaps easier than trying to fold something itself. So the next catch is that we've got to mark it out for the notch because we're going to notch it for the tie rod to come around through and then give it like a teardrop shape. So typically I use um, 50mm medium wool pipe uh, for my notches so work out how far you want it to go in. Mark it to suit. So we're going to roughly turn this over. cut that shape out of it. Same on this side, cut that shape out of it. But we want to Kind of cut it parallel to the back here. So we can square all that off and then start cutting. So I don't know if you can see it, but I'm going to get rid of all this material and cut this whole side out. And then we're going to cut this pipe in half, tack that in, and then I've got some 40 by 3 to make the back side. And then we can use our gussets, trim our, trim our pack gussets to suit, and um, weld it out. So it just allows the, the tie rod to come in and sit on the edge instead of it coming in and hitting the edge like so it'll allow it to come in for some more lock swap back over to the cutting disc and we're just going to start cutting it all out Pretty big room to let the tie rod to come through. So we'll cut the other side, 
I can grind it up, cut the pieces and weld it all together. Alright, now that we've got our lower control arm cut and our pieces of pipe cut and our little capping plates cut, we can uh, start tacking it all together, start welding it out. What's going to look like? Big cut out. Trying to keep space for the bolt, for the cast rod, but should be hefty lock. Now that we've got it tacked together, we can start welding it out. Um, we'll weld all the top out before we grind it all up and then start trimming the gusset up to suit as well. There you go, see all the penetration in it. It's got a crack in it.
So there you have it. Gusseted, plus 25 mil extension and a, and a big teardrop notch. So clean them all up, give them a coat of paint, send them back to old mate. Ended up running out of argon, so I'll have to finish them all off later next week. Managed to weld one pair out, but I've still got R31 plus 35 mil with a teardrop notch. These are R33 plus 35 mil with a teardrop notch. These are R34 plus 35 mil with a teardrop notch. And the R31 trolley arms I welded the other week turned out to be not R31. So I don't know what they're out of, but I've got a still haven't delivered the other pair to old mate, so I'll weld these out and then press the bushes out and um, get them off to him. But still got R31 knuckles, S13 knuckles, and S14 knuckles to do, and then an RB20 rack relocation, uh, S14 rack relocation, and an R31 S13 rack. So all that, all that, all that now be next week. Um, get a new bottle and then we'll weld these out, and then we can move on to doing the knuckles and doing the cross members. All right, thanks for watching.